If it had not been for you, Father, we'd have lost our mind. Some of us lost our mind, but God, we know you today as a restorer. We know that you're the one that restored our health and restored our mind and restored our children and our families and restored our marriages and restored our finances and restored our jobs. And God, it was nobody but you. You're the reason why we live. Because in you, we live and move and have our being. You are the reason, God. Hallelujah. You are the reason. Not because we got up past the alarm clock or the alarm clock woke us up. We realize, God, but if you had not touched us, we wouldn't have gotten up this morning. Thank you for causing our bodies and minds to be alert. God, we appreciate you so much. You are phenomenal in all your ways. You're just awesome. Oh, my God. Thank you, Father. Now, Father, as we get in your word today, we pray as we go further in the service that you would give us an ear to hear, give us a heart to receive, open up our eyes of understanding, enlighten us that we may know what is the hope of your calling for our life. Father, we thank you and we believe we receive increase, increase today, increase, increase of wisdom, increase of knowledge, increase of understanding, increase to know you better because when it's all said and done, God, we just want to know you better. We want to know you more. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. While you're standing, hallelujah, would you grab your Bibles? Let's make our declaration. Amen. Grab your Bible and let's make our declaration. Hallelujah. How many know God is good? Hallelujah. If your Bible, amen, is on your cell phone, we're not offended by technology. If it's on your iPad, amen, get it in the air. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, to know that God is good. <laughs> amen. Here we go. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Therefore, I boldly confess my mind is alert my heart is receptive, my faith is growing, and I am changing as a result of hearing God's word. For then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. You sound good as usual. Would you please remain standing? Amen. And turn with me to Genesis chapter 11. Please remain standing. Amen. And let's go to Genesis Chapter 11, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 11. I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation on today, the NLT, the New Living Translation on today. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, y'all. Give some. I see you on your, your little iPads and phones trying to go ahead and we'll wait. Amen. And when you're done, just text Pookie and tell him to come to church. Amen. Yeah. Y'all know that's a good one, right? Amen. Courtesy of Dr. Vernon. Amen. Come on. <laughs> tell Ray Ray, hurry up and get to church. You get here now, you'll make it before the word end. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody got a Ray Ray. Everybody have a Ray Ray. Amen. <laughs> and a Pookie. Hallelujah. And a Shoquita. Amen. And a Nay Nay. Amen. You know what? Everybody have a Ray Ray. Hallelujah. Ray Ray and a Lay Lay. And a Lily. Now we keep going. We're going to go all the way down the alphabet. A Mimi and a Nini. <laughs> Amen. I ain't heard of ZZ yet, but I'm sure ZZ is out there. Amen. And the word of the Lord reads Genesis chapter 11, 1 through 6 in the New Living Translation said, At one time, all the people of the world spoke the same language and used the same words. As the people migrated to the east, and they found the plain in the land of Babylonian and settled there. They began to say to each other, let us make bricks and harden them with fire. In this region, bricks were used instead of stone and tar was used for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build a great city for ourselves with a tower that reaches into the sky. This will make us famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. 
But the Lord came down to look at the city and the tower and the people were building. Look, he said, the people are united and they all speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. Amen. Look at your neighbor before you sit down and say unity plus opportunity equals destiny. Amen. You may take your seats in God's house. Amen. Opportunity is a chance or a break or an occasion. Anytime you have an opportunity, that's a chance for you to do something. That's an opportunity for you to go forward. Amen. And a destiny is the intentions or the call. If you, you had a destiny today when you woke up, amen, to get to church. How many had a destiny? Amen. Obviously, that was a call. Those were your intentions. And because you had a call to be here today, and those were your intentions, you showed up. Amen, somebody. Speaking the same language is a cliche we use when we are referring to unity or talking about the same thing. Amen. We sometimes use the cliche, man, we are on the same page. Amen. And when we say that, we are also referring to unity. Here in this passage of scripture, we see that the people were here were unified. Somebody say unified. They were on the same page and or speaking the same language. Now, let's talk about a few things. Let's talk about the word unity. Or let's, let's talk about the word unified. They were unified. Unified means uh, it's characterized by unity. It means being or joined into a single entity. It presents a united front. Anytime something is unified, you can see it coming together. Amen. Number two, let's talk about on the same page. Uh huh. If it's reading, we are reading the same story or the same thing. Yeah, when you're on the same page, when I turn to Genesis chapter 11, amen, rather it was in New King James, King James, our Amplified Version, we all were on the same page. Is that right? Not me reading Genesis and you reading Revelation. No, no, we all on the same page. Tell somebody, say, get on the page. And if it's math, we're solving the same problems. Whatever page the instructor is on, the students are on the same page. Come on. Not half the class on additions and the other half on subtraction, but tell somebody we're all on the same page. And then number three, we talk about unity or unified is speaking the same language. Now, this is crucial because if someone is speaking a language, that sets the tone for connection or conversation. If I'm talking English, talk back to me in English. Come on, somebody. And if I say Guten Morgen, you say what? Good morning. Come on, somebody. And if I say Buenos Dias, you say what? Good morning. Come on. You got to say the same thing. You're going to say bring us this back. Amen. Amen. The bottom line is this. In order for us to communicate effectively, we must all speak the same language. They were unified in their efforts to accomplish their goal. Now, how many know that that's a good thing? Yeah. If you're going to accomplish a goal, a mission or assignment, it is advantageous that everyone on the team is working with the same goal. Everyone is working on the same goal, the same mission, and the same assignment. If you're on the, if, if you're on the same team, you got to be going in the same direction. Now, while they all understood one another, they would be more likely to love one another. When you're in the house, amen, I can talk for the Barnett house, we're there. Amen. We're in the house and everybody's doing the same thing. Come on. And everybody's unified. Amen. When you dwell together, you have a tendency to love each other. Come on. You should. <laughs> and I don't know about some of these families. Amen. But you should love each other. Amen. When you work together, you're more likely to love one another and more capable of helping one another. And the less inclinable is to separate from one another. Because when you're with someone, you automatically want to be connected to them. Tell somebody, yes, that's true. Now, to our situational text. Here we have from the previous closing chapter, from Genesis chapter 10, 
we know that the sons of Noah were divided into nations. That means they were divided into section, colonies, or perhaps even tribes. They were yet to possess their inheritance that was found, that they found in a plain, when the plain is nothing more than a what, a flat surface, amen, in the land of Shinar. Now, Shinar means watch of him that sleeps. So they planted themselves in the land of watch of him that sleeps. That's why, you know, let me take a commercial break. Y'all got to watch what y'all name y'all cheering. You know, you better name your children, cut my head off of, you know, or, you know, <laughs> You know, or kizzy means stay put in. You know, just people just come up with stuff. They just make up stuff. You know, they, you know, somebody was talking about the name flow uh, the other day, you know. And, you know, you name your child this part of a name, the front part of the, the father's name, and the last part of the grandfather's name, and you don't create a monster. You, give your children names that have substance. Amen. Give your children names to some of this stuff the kids that, that's why the kids are so confused they don't know who, who what the name mean amen and if you made it up at least have common see it's you the author of the name name it name them shaquila your name means precious one come on somebody i mean you're the author who writes a book and then let folks tell them what goes in it you made up that name you felt lead or semen or concrete whatever you felt and that's what you named your child. You define that child. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, kids, people naming their kid kill a rabbit. What for what? What that rabbit do to you? <laughs> Amen. Let's go back. In their, jo in their decision to dwell there in that land of Shinar, they stayed by reason of agreement. The advantage was they were all of the same language. Thus, this give hinting that perhaps before the flood, there were other languages before the Noah, before God put Noah in the ark and closed him in and his family. Perhaps when Noah was on the earth, there's hintings that there were other languages that were spoken. Amen. When Noah was upon the ark and then after the flood came and washed out the uh, humanity and creation. Amen. Noah was preserved. His language was preserved. Because if him and his family spoke the same language and they all was in, in Noah's ark. Amen. So because they were in the ark, their language was spared. Amen. That's what theologians say. I wasn't there. I don't know. You wasn't there. You don't either. Amen. In verse 1, the Bible said they spoke the same language. Amen. That means they used the same words. In verse 3, he said, they said to each other, Let's make. And verse 4 says, they said, come let. So in verse 1, they spoke the same language and used the same words. Verse 3 says, they said to each other, let's make. And verse 4 says, they said, come let's. Despite their motives, they were excited about their vision. They had momentum. Momentum is a driving force. It's an impelling force of strength, but their motors really stunk. <laughs> they had stinky motors. They said, come and let us make a great city for ourselves. And let us make us famous. Yeah, tell somebody their motors were stinky. Yeah, they had bad motors, yeah. But, but their vision, they was excited about their vision. Come on. Sometimes people have bad motives, but they're excited about doing things. So that let me know you can be excited about doing the wrong thing. Everybody say bad motives. Now, what we can take from this is harvest. We have the city of Rayford, Holt County. Come on. We have the whole Holt County community to build the kingdom of God. We have the, I mean, come on. We are not limited. Lord have mercy. I was reading in your copious free time. I was reading Joshua chapter 18 and it just blew me away. You know, but we're not limited. I said, harvest, we're not limited. We have the potential, ever growing, never changing potential. That's what it is. We have the potential, amen, of affecting and affecting, amen, Rayford, Hope County. Amen. And that's our goal. Now, our reason, our motives, which is the reason behind what we do, our motives are not to make us famous or popular. Come on, somebody. However, our motives are to populate heaven and plunder hell. Come on, somebody. 
Amen. Our motive is to increase the kingdom of God and decrease Satan's headquarters. We are a focus. We, we, we are a focus driven mission ministry. We have a mission to focus on and a ministry that we have to do for the Lord. Amen. So our motives has to be pure. The reason why we do stuff, we don't listen. We don't do some things we do so people can't come to church. Now, come on, let's just be real. We, we just do. But everything we do, we don't do so people can come to harvest. You follow me? Some things we do for the kingdom. Tell, tell, tell somebody, take one for the kingdom. See, when I witness to people, everybody ain't coming to harvest. But they are in the kingdom, and they can go somewhere and minister and work for the Lord. Tell somebody, be kingdom-minded. Yes, yeah, see, we ought to be a force to be reckoned with. Come on. We must not only make this our conversation, but see the results of, of our conversation. Come on, somebody. Everywhere we go, tell your neighbor, hell's got to give up something. Yeah, everywhere we go, hell has to give up somebody. Come on, somebody. In my house, hell has to give up my family. Come on. On my job, hell has to give up my boss and my co-workers. Come on. In Walmart, hell has to give up the cashier. Hell has to give up the stock worker. Hell has to give up the meat cutter. Come on. In the church, hell has to give up the sinner. Everywhere I go, I'm expecting hell to give up something. Now, that can't be your conversation alone because the Bible said faith without works is dead being alone. That means if I'm expecting hell to give up something, then I have got to use the mechanism of my mouth to minister hope to somebody in this dying world. Tell somebody everywhere I go, hell has to give up something. Come on, you got to put a demand on hell and tell them you're going to give them up. Give up my children. Come on. Give up my nephew. Come on, somebody. You must ain't got nobody that need to be saved. Come on. Give up my husband. Come on. Give my children up. Everywhere we go, we got to tell the devil, yo, you're going to give that up. Yeah, you're going to give them up. You're not going to keep what belongs to God. Amen. Make a declaration and work it by being a witness of Jesus. Amen. You got to witness about Jesus if you want hell to give up something. Can't be talking about, oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, I just pray they come. No, you can pray all you want to. You got to go out there walking around the church 50 years. Oh, Father, send them in. Oh, send them in. They don't even know you're here. You got to go out there and get them so they can come in. Tell somebody, I know that's the truth. I'm almost done. See, I'm almost done. Listen, listen. Verse 5 says, the Lord came down. Get ready, Vivian. He said, the Lord came down. To look at the city and tower. Now, you are really doing something when the Lord comes down. You're really doing something. Is God going to come down and see about you? Now, we know that dispensation of time, how God used to come down. Even the Bible talks about Job when he came to visit Job, the sons of man came with him. You know, so he, he was, you know, even in the garden, he came down in the cool of the day. And that's why he asked Adam, where you at? Adam said, I hid myself he, because I was naked. He said, who told you you were naked? Look at your neighbor and say, who told you you were naked? Okay, that's another story. That's another message somewhere else. Amen. So God was accustomed. Come on. God was, <laughs> who, <t> who, <laughs> Lord, have mercy. God was accustomed for coming down and talking to his people. And as I forward stated, if you got to really be doing something if, if God is coming down. And how about tonight? T I mean, t right now, tonight, Lord Jesus. How about right now, God is still coming down? Yes, he does. Uh -huh. When we start doing what we know we are supposed to do and can do, it will cause God to take note of your effort, your work, and your labor. He will know without a shadow of a doubt. You have to know it without any reservations. That when you start doing things, God is recognizing. He's looking and he's booking. And he's seeing, come on somebody, he is seeing the mere fact that what you're doing, he's taking note. There's nothing that you do good or bad that God don't see. What the songwriter said, if I make my bed in hell, he's going to be there. If I send to the highest part of the mountain, he's going to be there too. Where can I hide from the presence of the Lord? You cannot hide. That's why people talk about I'm running. She running from the Lord. Well, where's she going to hide? I mean, <laughs> Where can you go and hide? Good Lord, I mean, you're already in a building. You go under the seat, God see you. Go in the closet, he see you in there too. 
Amen. He see you while you're fornicating. Come on. He see the adultery activity. Come on, somebody. God see all that. Tell somebody he see everything. Now the folk time like that hide from the preacher. Don't hide from me. I, I can't put you nowhere. I might do my best to get you to heaven. But I don't want to go to church because the pastor might see. Forget that pastor. Pastor got to make it to heaven for herself. You better be more concerned about the one that can destroy both body and soul into hell and stop fearing man. Man can't do nothing for you. Tell somebody you better get busy. Amen. Reread for me. Um, but they read verse, read verse uh, six. Read, read, sweetie. Look, he said. Look, he said, listen. The people are united. He said the people are united. Read. And they all speak the same language. And they all do what? They all speak the same language. Now listen. After this, listen, listen. Nothing they set out to do. Come on, somebody. What did it say? What did it say? Will be impossible. Listen. For them. Listen. Read that again. After this, read, read. After this. No, go back and read it from the beginning because I got to come down here. Look, he said. Look, 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 he said. This, what you, this is what God said. What did God say? The people are united. He said, you know, that blow you away when God can call you united. He said, say what? The people are united. He said, the people, Lord, they got some sense. They united. Now, 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 remember, they had bad motives. But they had momentum. They had a driving force of strength. They had a tenacity that was second to none. They were excited about the vision that they had. Read the book. Yes. That's something. Read. They all speak the same language. He said they united and they speak in the same. Read the book. And after this. Uh Uh-huh, after this. Nothing they set out to do. He said, listen, after this. After you are united and after you are speaking the same language, after you are united and after you're speaking the same language, I said after you are united and after you are speaking the same language, read. Nothing. Nothing. No thing. Read. They set out to do. Nothing that they do or set out to do or happen to do will be impossible Lord, I'm so excited of him. He said they nothing will be impossible. Now, side note, SN, he didn't say nothing will be impossible for me to do. God wasn't talking about himself. We always talk about God specializes in things that are impossible. But here God is saying that if they are united and speak in the same language, whatever they set out to do, he said nothing shall be impossible for them. We always want to put it back on God. But God said, no, no, no. I'm putting it back on you. God said, the people are united. They speak the same language. Because of this, nothing. Tell somebody, we can do this. We can do this. Yeah. Tell somebody, unity Unity plus opportunity opportunity equals equals destiny. Yeah, that's the, that's the problem we're going to solve for the day. That's the problem for the day. Amen. Say it again. Unity, Unity plus, opportunity plus opportunity equals destiny. Equals destiny. When they united together, then when they received the instructions, the vision, they were on their way to their destiny. Now, I must say this because the opposite of unity is division. I have to say this because if unity, they get strength and they're united, then division means that they'll be split or divided. Mm -hmm. Question, how can we be on the same team, on team Jesus, and talking about one another? Sowing discord among the brethren. Come on, somebody. Can't get along with one another. Come on, somebody. Conflict on the team. Come on, somebody. Can't work together in the kingdom of God. How can that be? Come on. 
That's a divided team. Matthew 12 and 25 says, listen, it says a house divided against itself cannot stand. Let me say it one more time. And I'll give you the verse, Matthew 12 and 25, write it down. A house divided against itself cannot stand. So what's the factor to division? Somebody say self. Uh-huh. Self is what divides the house. Too much flesh. Yeah. It said itself. Yeah. Yeah. If it divides itself, too much flesh. Yeah. When we make things about us and not about God, then division comes. Romans 8 and 8, one of my, Romans is my favorite book in the whole Bible. I promise you, it's my favorite book in the whole Bible. Romans 8 and 8 says that if we are in the flesh, we cannot please God. Yeah, I learned discipline by reading Romans. Yeah, I love that book. It helps me. If we are in the flesh, not spirit. No, what's a, well, what you talking about, Pastor? I'm human. No, that's the problem. Get out of your flesh. The Bible said if you are the sons of God, if you're led by the spirit of God, then you're the sons of God. Not by the flesh, but God, you have to be led by God in the spirit. Yeah, because if you, in the flesh, you can't, it's enmity against God. If, in other words, if you have a carnality, flesh means carnal, carny, carn, carn, yeah, hot dogs, carnality, no flesh, yeah, that means flesh. So if you're carnal, that means you're fleshly minded. You cater to everything to your five senses. Whatever your body tell you to do, you do it. Yeah, whatever your body tell you to eat, reasonably now I'm talking. Your body, you on a fast. Your body say, eat, you know not to do it. Come on. You on a fast. You know, if you know, you, you tired and, and, and you just came home from work, your body say, oh, just stay home tonight. You know, just, just stay home tonight. You know not to listen to your flesh because if you had to go back to work, you go. We quit God quicker than anything, I promise. When it, we, we don't get tired. We wake up in the morning tired and still go to work. Yeah, we can come home from work tired and stay home. Come on, somebody. Because we're too tired to go to church. And guess what? You'll never stand before your boss on judgment day. Yeah, we'll never stand before your boss on judgment day. To give an account for everything. Okay, that's another story on another day. Amen, 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 amen. First, we are on cheating Jesus. Tell your neighbor, I'm glad we're on the same team. Yeah, yeah. Shout unity. That's we. Shout unity. unity. There you go. Plus opportunity, Plus opportunity. Equals, destiny. equals destiny. Yeah, God only uses two mathematical factors in his kingdom, which are addition and multiplication. Come on. And we can take this home. We can take this. We can take this home. Come on, my demonstration. We're my demonstrators. Amen. Amen. Just because a person says they're on the team does not really mean that they're on the team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you know? What are the distinctions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They wear the same uniform. Let me move out. There. Come on. Don't get in the middle. I'll, I'll come over here. There you go. Yeah, they got on the same uniform. That's how, that's how you know they're on the same team. Ain't? You wear your uniform the same way. Yeah, everybody's the same. Not cute. We operate in excellence. You, when you're on the team, you wear it according to the instructions. You don't get to do what you want to do. Amen. You, you know, being in the army, just because I wear dresses, and I do wear pants, so let me put that out there, I can't decide to just gonna make some ACU's skirt. Come on, somebody. Yeah, somebody say UCMJ. Yeah, okay. Can't just do what you wanna do. When there's a standard, you have to obey Yes, I said, oh, did I say obey? Yeah, that's a still a good word. It's more than seasoned salt. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you have to submit, and you have to do what the standard. <laughs> you have to do, and <laughs> that a priest too, amen, what the standard say do. So I need you to get in uniform, because how many know you can have it on and not, if I wore my ACUs without a belt, I'm still out of uniform. 
yeah, yeah, I'm still out of uniform. So just because you have it on, if you don't have it on the way the reg says you have it on, you're still out of uniform. Come on, somebody, tell somebody, stay in the standard. Amen, amen. What everybody, you wear it the same way, you have fruit. You, uh, you produce, you produce good fruit and tell somebody, get in the uniform. Amen. Well, what uniform did we wear? Ephesians gives us a uniform. He said, put on the whole armor of God. Yeah, that's the uniform that we wear as believers. Amen. We put on the, I ain't going to go through all of them. Read them in your copious free time. Amen. Ephesians 6, 11 through 18. Amen. You put on the whole armor and you put it on the right way. Come on, somebody. Amen. And then they carry the same vision. They're headed all in the same direction. How? Uh -huh. The uh, Bible says in Habakkuk 2, 2 and 3, they read it and then they run with it. Come on. Everybody going in the same direction. Everybody going in the same direction. Come on. Everybody doing the same thing. Get on the same foot. Now, you can't be on the left foot and they on the right foot. There you go. Everybody marching the same way. Come on, somebody. And then you must be flexible because when the leader makes a certain change, come on, you got to be able to change. Come on. And when the leader change again, come on, you got to be on the same step. You can't be so cute and stuck like you act like you can't do nothing. Tell somebody when you're growing, you expect change. Just like a woman having a baby. I mean, come on now. You got nine months to prepare. But sometimes when that baby comes out at six months, come on, if it comes out premature, you got to shift. Come on and go to another direction. Tell somebody, shift. Yeah. Amen. You got to expect change with growth. Everyone are active participants. Don't tell me you're on the same team and you never come to practice. Uh-huh. Don't tell me. You're on the same team and you're always late. You, have, you never come on time and you always leave early. Tell somebody that's not a team player. Yeah, and yeah, in order to get in the game, you must come to practice. You got to know the plays before we actually get out there on the court. Come on, somebody. You don't, you don't let me tell you something. I don't care if you are the starting five. Miss practice. You sitting your hips on the bench. I don't care if you are the quarterback. Don't show up. Your replacement will be on the field. Come on, somebody. Tell somebody second string will do the thing. I'm telling you, you can act like you're crazy if you want to. You can't tell somebody you can't be replaced. Yeah, see, don't get it. Don't get the big head and act like nothing moved because you don't show up, baby. I'm telling you now, God's got a way. To keep the train going. Come on, when the engine give out, he'll get another one. Come on, when the caboose fall out the way, he'll get another one. Come on, somebody. Yeah, and they carry the same vision and they headed in the same direction. And then they say the same thing. Amen. I like that. Now say something else. Amen. No matter. Now say it again. Amen. They saying the same thing. See, you had to catch that. Because I said say something. Oh, come on. Now, if I'd have said say something, say, and he said crazy, 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 he'd have missed it. Because I said say Tell somebody, pay attention to details. Yeah, don't let the words of your mouth, don't let the words that God has given you depart out of your mouth, Joshua 1 and 8. Amen. You got to say the same thing and meditate on what God said. And he said, when you do that in Joshua 1 8, he said, then you're going to make your way prosperous and you're going to have. You tell somebody you got to do it yourself. Harvest, if we're going to make our way prosperous in God, we have to do it. God is not going to, here we go again. Same old stuff again. God keep on showing us the same thing over and over again. You know why? Because we don't get it. And the reason why he's saying, listen, you have got to say the same thing over and over again until they get it. He said, if you meditate on my word day and night, you're going to get revelation knowledge. He is the, way that, he is the one to show you how to prosper and lead you in the way you should go. Amen. Harvey said, we are prospering church. 
Now, that's not money only. We're prospering because we're able to make a fact. Come on. We're able to make a dent. We're able to make an impact on the community. That's how you know you're prosperous. Amen. Tell somebody you better know who you are. Amen. It does include money because money does follow ministry and we need it. Amen. To feed people. You can't feed people. Holiday, y'all shunder. No, they're not going to eat that. No, they're they not finna eat that. You can't even pay groceries, lights with Kiyamasha. No, no. Uh-uh. Tell somebody you need some money to feed them babies. Come on. You need some money to close the poor. Come on. Yeah, you need some money. Come on, somebody. Go pray your car now. Well, Shonda. They be like, no, Shonda gonna get your car. If you come on. If you <laughs> Yeah, I'm telling you. Amen. Thank you for support. Everybody give them a hand. Everybody clap your hands. Amen. We're standing. Come on. Let's stand. Let's stand. Amen. I told you I won't be long. Amen. When God got something to say, it don't take all day. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody say unity, unity. plus opportunity unity. equals destiny. Amen. Amen. They had a mind, amen, to do something that they set out to do. And because they had a heart and a mind to do it, amen, they were able to do it. No division amongst us. No division. Everybody saying the same thing. Amen. Everybody doing the same thing. Amen. Amen. That's kind of weak amens there a little bit. I'm a participatory person. I like, let me hear you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It's just like somebody in a building. If the building is burning, you in there talking about, help. Help. Unless you got laryngitis. You better open up that mouth and say, help. <laughs> Amen, somebody. I, we said yesterday, it's the squeakiest wheel. That get the oil. Come on. It's the emptiest wagon that makes the most noise. Come on, somebody. Tell somebody, make some noise. I ain't Kirk Franklin either, but make some noise. Come on, make some noise. Amen. Amen. Unity plus opportunity equals destiny. I need all of us on one accord. Everybody saying the same thing. Everybody doing. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? When people walk up to you, you should be able to tell them about your church. What do your church do? You should be able to route and tell them, oh, you know, our store, our church has a, a little thing that's like a store. It's not a store because we don't sell anything, you know, but we give to the community. People can come in, less fortunate, low income, or you might just have a bad season and you might be in between blessings. If you need something, we're a resource, you know, because we realize God's the source and he's just blessing us to be the blessing. Amen. And so, you know, we give out free clothes and food and whatever else we try to do to impact the people's lives. Amen. Jesus fed the 5,000. He couldn't talk to them all day. People can't hear you when they're hungry. When you're hungry, you don't want to. Some of y'all hungry right now going past the Lisa. So I'm going to need y'all to eat breakfast before y'all come to church. Grab a piece of toast. Suck on a lemon. Do something. Don't come up in here hungry. But see, when you get hungry, your spirit will rush me. I'll be like, I, and I start talking about steaks and potatoes. And <laughs> they be like, Lord Jesus, your flesh just went that way. Amen. I want all of you. All of you are on my team. You're a part of Harvest. You've joined this ministry. You're on my team. I'm telling you, we are making so much impact. You know what I learned about losing weight? You lose inches long before you lose weight. So it looks like you're not losing weight, but you really are. Because you'll lose those inches before you lose those pounds. Well, Pastor Lisa, what that got to do with anything? We may not be filled up in here yet. Tell somebody yet. But we will be. Because we are making an impact on this community like never before. They're going to be like, who, who, who that? Who, who, who them people? Who them people? And guess what? When you're excited about something, you'll tell it. Mm -hmm. You'll tell it. You might say, hey, Pastor Lisa, you know what? That's me. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited about what we're doing. I just need to get with the vision, and I just need to push it. I need to just push the vision 